Mount Tabor in the Holy Land is the site where Jesus experienced the transfiguration before he began the bitter path of sorrows to Calvary. Through the dedication to bear our cross, we too can be transformed and radiant with the glory of God. Bethlehem helps us to meditate on the great miracle of the birth of Jesus. He entered this world as a helpless babe born in a manger. He wanted to become one of us, to draw as close as possible to us in order to show us the way back home to the Father. He who was born in a lowly stable was the way, the truth, and the life. Behind the Bethlehem Grotto, we find a place called Ephrat. Reference to this village is found in Micah 5, verse 1. In Israel today, the city of Ephrat has become a thriving Jewish community located south of Bethlehem. It has become a symbol of the deep love which the Jewish people have for the land of their fathers. Here one is invited to pray for the Jewish people and for the land. Israel has always had a special place in our hearts due to the great guilt which we carry from the Holocaust. We are now entering the Garden of Jesus' Sufferings. Here we are invited to reflect on what Jesus did to save us. Jesus is asking us today, as long ago, to watch with Him in prayer. Many are moved to kneel beside Him in spirit and thank Jesus for the battle which He fought against the powers of darkness. Here, His tears became drops of blood as He spoke the words, My Father, not mine, but Your will be done. His humble submission to the will of the Father has encouraged many to follow His example and to proclaim in times of difficult pathways, My Father, I do not understand you, but I trust in your love. Jesus longs to have his followers close beside him. What brought great sadness to his heart is revealed to us in John 16, verse 32. You will leave me all alone. He seeks those who are willing to accept the will of the Father, even if it leads us along a pathway of suffering. Like a lamb, Jesus let himself be dragged before the judges and accused. Let us learn from his example. When people reproach us and accuse us, let us accept it silently so that the Lord can mold us into his image of suffering love. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Insults have broken my heart. I looked for pity, but there was none. Dishonored, robbed of all dignity, He wins for us the crown of glory. When they hurled their insults at Him, He did not retaliate. When He suffered, He made no threats. Instead, He entrusted Himself to Him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness, for by his wounds you have been healed. Jesus is risen. He is triumphant over all the powers of sin and death. Hallelujah! We praise and worship the love of Jesus, which has brought us salvation and victory. Canaan is to be a land of never-ending praise and worship to God. The Herald Chapel is often used for times of prayer and adoration, as well as the Sunday morning communion service. Everything on Canaan should lead us to a deeper walk of faith with Jesus and to a life of reconciliation, love, and peace with each other. In the times that we are living in, it is important to experience such a foretaste of heaven where Jesus is Lord and people live according to the Sermon on the Mount. It is our desire to bring joy to the heart of the Father. Here in our publishing house, we are able to distribute books and leaflets, bookmarks and comforting texts from Canaan in many languages, 
now almost a hundred. The closer we come to the return of Jesus, the stronger the spiritual battle becomes between light and darkness. There is an urgency to distribute more literature wherever there is an open door. Mothers Mother Basilia Schlink and Mother Martyria Madaus are buried in the prayer garden on Canaan. Their life and example have laid a firm foundation for our ministry. All over the world, people have been encouraged and blessed by the literature which has come from their uncompromising walk with our Lord Jesus. Leaving Canaan, the farewell inscription at the gate reads, God's name is yes and amen. We praise and bless His holy name. He does whatever He promises.